Well, Scritti Politi originally was um, me, an old school friend, and a college friend. And, and um, although I had kind of grown up playing the guitar a bit, I by no means, you know, had mastered it. I knew a few chords, basically. Um, Tom, who was the drummer, who was a fellow art student, I mean, I think he started learning the drums about three weeks before we went in the recording studio for the first time. And Neil, who was the first bass player, likewise. So we were incredibly inept musically, but that was part of the appeal of the whole thing. In fact, that almost became, you know, fetishized after a while. It was like really cool to play badly. In fact, some of that still survives in the kind of indie aesthetic. Um, and we kind of hung on in there for a while. Uh, but I think my interests in sort of pop music proper didn't really go along with theirs. Um, and so we we split up, and I hooked up with um, two guys from New York, um, David Gampson and Fred Marr, who were brought to my attention by um, Jeff Travis at Rough Trade. They that they had done a demo, uh, and they were at that stage they were still at school. Um, they did a sort of electro version of the Archie's Sugar Sugar, which I don't know if anybody ever heard, but I thought it was really cool. And um, so I think either I flew out to New York to meet them. Or they came to London. Uh, we saw, yeah, we had Jeff Travis as a mutual friend, and uh, you know I was keen in messing about with what was happening in New York at the time. And they'd both grown up sort of Anglophile, and they liked all things British. So um, that was the second line of a scritty politi, and that survived until my kind of retreat into the wilderness, um, when David went on to do A and R for Warner Brothers and Fred Marr for another company. Uh, we've hooked up again since. David produced this last record for me, but it, it kind of works better that he's sort of not in uh, the band because when he was both, you know, the, one of the problems with provision was trying to write it yourself, sing it yourself, produce it yourself. Uh, and when you're as neurotic as I am, and he has come to that, it's a very difficult thing to sort of go one side of the glass and sing a vocal and then rush back into the other side and sit behind the, the recall mixing desk and decide whether it's any good or not. So this time round, I said, okay, you stay one side of the glass, I'll stay the other. That would seem to make more sense to me. And uh, yeah, it certainly led for a, 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 a much smoother and enjoyable piece of recording. It also kind of re-established my friendship with, um, with David and Fred, which is a very important thing to me. And I think it had become strained by my, uh, you know, by these years in the wilderness, as I refer to them. <laughs> Thank you. 